we're now going to have a look at the properties of alpha radiation and for this we're going to use the school's plutonium-239 source which gives out alpha radiation. So like all our radioactive sources they're stored in a lead-lined box and um, we are going to use tongs to take them out so that my hands don't get too close to the radioactive source. So this is mostly the holder and then there is a very small amount of the radioactive source inside. And so if I reset the counter, there we go, at the moment we can see that we're not detecting any alpha radiation from the source. And in order to detect it, I need to push it really quite close to the, let's put the sounder on, you need to put it quite close to the Geiger Muller tube, which is this bit which detects the radiation, which is then counted here. And if I push it so it's only a few millimetres away, then we start to get a lot of alpha radiation being detected. But as soon as I move it a few centimetres back, I'm getting almost no alpha radiation detected, which is telling us that the alpha radiation can only go a few centimetres in air. The other thing that we can look at is what I would need to put in between in order to block it. And alpha radiation, uh, I can see what effect putting a single piece of paper in between the source of alpha radiation and the detector. And that thin piece of paper absorbs virtually all the alpha radiation. So we can see alpha radiation has a low penetrating power. It can only travel a few centimetres in air and it is stopped by a sheet of paper. So I can now put the plutonium-239 source away and look at our next kind of nuclear radiation.